We are leveraging addressable TV solutions more or less on a case-by-case -case basis. It depends on what the client's objectives are. A lot of times it's testing specific markets or if it's a very known um, target that we're trying to reach and we have enough data to actually do something that's, that's sizable enough so that we can see results. That's been the, the key thing. We've had addressable campaigns that have run but have been less successful because the target was way too niche. Similar to other companies, we are very focused on our data strategy, but it's a data strategy that is meant to be highly focused on client objectives, not just collecting as much data as possible, but being very thoughtful about it and making sure that it's applicable. I think that the industry is, is very hypersensitive sensitive and hyper-focused on data, and it's not always quality data. So third-party data assets are being used frequently, but it's not necessarily um, the most valuable data. And with the, the coming of GDPR, to, which will be in the United States fairly soon, um, it's going to make a bigger difference. We have to find the quality data, the first party uh, data partners, and the second party data relationships to get those in play so that it is um, much more quality data and it's much more useful as opposed to relying on third parties. So we stay at the forefront because we are constantly doing research, we're constantly evolving, we're constantly testing. So we encourage all of our clients to have a testing framework in place so we can try out new tactics to see what works. I mean, this has especially come up with emerging technology like AR and VR you're like, is this going to have an impact? If you read the trades, yes, but sometimes no. And it's really testing these things out. Also in the um, virtual assistant area. So with Alexa, is building a skill, a skill going to be um, useful for the brand? How do you make it authentic and how do you make it findable? So it's, it's constantly a test and learn scenario for us. We had a very active campaign um, with Corona recently and it's going into planning for the next year and it's, it's, not, it's not necessarily game changing because it's new but it's game changing because it's very effective and it's the, the accurate usage of dynamic optimization for the creative. So making sure you're in the moment and changing the ad to make sense with whatever that person is doing. So if, say, Steph Curry dunks the ball, then a corona gets its line. So it's following that kind of process of making sure it's in the moment and that is a attracting the person's attention because it's very relevant to them at that time. I think the dynamic creative should be a part of most most clients plans quite frankly because you're always trying to make sure that whatever advertising you're serving is going to be relevant and that's one of the best ways to do it. Most recently ACR has been very popular so automated content recognition so understanding through this technology what someone has seen on the big screen and then remarketing them with a smaller screen has, has been very interesting. There's lots of methodologies between the companies that do that, so finding the right one and the right fit can be a little bit of a challenge, but overall that's a very interesting technology that we're starting to, to make use of. I think there's going to be a convergence in the OTT space because all of a sudden there are way too many apps, individual channels, or networks with their own apps, and I think it's eventually going to come together and there will be fewer players in the space, but it'll be a lot easier to utilize.